welcome to the latest episode of the Salon Marketing Q&A and the very last one of the year. So I'm trying something a little different as well because as I'm on Facebook, I actually have my phone set up and I'm on Instagram Live as well. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, if you didn't catch us uh, yesterday, I actually was testing Facebook Live out and or sorry, I was testing Instagram Live out and I really enjoyed it. So I thought, well, if let's see if it's actually possible to produce the same show for Facebook Live and for Instagram Live. All that means is I just have two pieces of equipment set up and I can deliver the same message at the same time for your convenience. Okay, so we might see if we can uh, build an audience here and there, um, which is kind of funny because what I'm trying today kind of relates to the topic of today as well. So before I get right to the topic, I just wanted to highlight the usual. So we produce this show every single week live on Facebook and perhaps live on Instagram going forward. Um, and if you aren't able to catch this live on the spot, because I know you guys are, are quite busy, what we're actually going to be able to do is put this on Facebook as a post going forward so you can check it there or it'll go on the Instagram story for the next 24 hours. Alternatively, I actually download these videos and I put them on YouTube as a playlist. So you can catch every single episode of the Salon Marketing Q&A on YouTube at your convenience at a later date. So, that being said, welcome to the show. So, for the Salon Marketing Q&A, normally I take questions on the spot. Um, but this time I thought I'd actually choose the topic myself because it's the end of the year and I thought I might end it on a specific message that might be helpful for you. Um, and we'll uh, take a peek. So even then, once I get across this, I might check out your comments. So if you guys have any salon marketing related comments or questions that you'd like to ask, I can answer them on the spot. So all you have to do is just drop that into the uh, comment box. And I'll get to it. I might just finish the topic of the day first, and then we'll go straight into the actual salon marketing questions. Okay, so the question of the day, the topic of this episode, is how to craft the right mindset to succeed in your salon marketing plan. So I think this is very interesting because primarily what, what happens when a lot of salons, a lot of salon owners, and a lot of businesses in general, they get into marketing, a lot of times the failure and the pitfalls that they find aren't actually due to the content that they produce. It's more about the consistency and their expectations. And that's kind of where I want to get to today on today's episode. It's actually about the mindset because above all else, if you don't have the right mindset to succeed in your uh, marketing strategy, like you'll never win. And that's where I think a lot of people fall down. So I thought today we can focus on making sure that you have the right frame of mind so you can succeed in 2018 in terms of your marketing and trying to get your business to the next level. So first off, I think that one of the most important things to remember and to keep in mind when you're getting into 2018 as you're putting your marketing strategy together is that the, the ones that succeed, the companies, the business owners, the salons, the people that really succeed in their marketing, it comes down to consistency and their tone as well. So by consistency, I mean if you're going to start something, a lot of times it takes so much effort and time to actually grow that audience, to grow that client base, to get them into the routine of you guys doing it, that it doesn't happen immediately. And because it doesn't happen immediately, a lot of people actually quit. They say, well, we didn't get the reaction we were looking for, so they switch it up. What happens is they never actually gave it a chance to succeed. So I think that's a really important aspect they pay attention to. So let's say um, you might be looking into starting your own blog for 2018, or you might be looking at Facebook Live or Instagram Live and try and do something with videos. Now, when you start off, you have zero audience who actually understand that this is a concept that they should be tuning into routinely. So the thing is, you have to build that into their mindset. This is a routine, this is happening weekly, and slowly you can build that audience up. Sometimes it happens immediately. That I know is what people expect, 
but more often than not, it actually takes a few months to slowly build that audience. And once you do, then it hits a certain level where you can actually truly succeed in that channel or in that strategy. So I would recommend that next year, just have a little more patience with your marketing and to give it a real good shot. Don't just try it once or twice and go, nobody cared about that idea, so let's just move on to something else. Because what you're doing is you're not allowing your audience to actually understand that this is a reoccurring thing. So perhaps, I've like even in terms of um I just had a thought there uh even in terms of I was chatting to a salon owner the other day and they were talking about creating their own podcast which I thought was unique cuz we do a podcast as well and we've been doing it nearly a year now with Zoe and Killian and they were asking about should they start their own podcast and for me, if you know me, you know I'm always up for so many different unique ideas. Like You can make it work if you kind of organize it in a fun, inviting manner and you stay consistent with it. So my advice to this person was, well, by all means, try it. But word of warning, it'll take a while to grow your audience. So don't even expect to get this big surge of listeners in the first six months. It might happen. Hopefully it does. But what happens is people will start that. They'll develop their entire plan. They'll get people involved. And then no one listens to the first episode. No one listens to the second. Three people listen to the third. You know, and then they get discouraged and they move on to something else. Well, the people you listen to, the people that you know, the people that you enjoy, they started just like you. They had no one listening to the first episode, the second episode, things like that. Just like on your Facebook page, just like on your Instagram, when you start this from the beginning, you have no posts, no one following you, but slowly and surely you can get people to pay attention. And that's the beautiful thing. So just remember that these things can take some time, have some patience, try to keep the quality always to a certain level and be consistent. So that's a really important thing. Um, keep a stable tone as well. I mean, think about your brand as an extension of you or who you'd like to... It, who you like to represent in terms of this this company, you know? So the tone is extremely important because if it wasn't just a company, an organization talking to this person, think of it as a one-to-one. -one. Now you're at a house party or you're at a dinner party and you're talking to somebody individually. Like they would want to see a consistency in that personality in order for this conversation to continue. If you were, quote, quote, all over the place or like jumping around at different tones and different emotions, that's startling to people. Now, that same example does work in business if you switch your tone up too often. If you're jumping from one kind of attitude and emotion to another so quickly, it doesn't allow the audience to really grasp who you are and understand what your brand is all about. So um, try to keep that tone consistent as much as using the channels on a consistent basis. Also, here's another fun one that it might be frightening to you guys at first, um, but it can really work. And that's don't be afraid to take risks. Um, I'm really fortunate because in Forest they actually allow me to take these risks that I can go off and I can try something out and see if it works. And I'll tell you, not everything works, but I'm not really afraid of that. Like, for instance, yesterday I was just testing Instagram because we have a brand new Instagram live show that we're going to be doing in January with business and salon consultant Valerie Del Forge. I wanted to make sure that the technology worked, that we could actually do the show together. So yesterday, we just went online and we just did an Instagram Live. People joined up and we were just saying hi to them, going, yeah, we're just testing things out. And then we had like a mini episode, a little conversation. Like, I'd say a lot of people would never even try that because they're like, oh, but what would happen if they see us testing stuff? Like, so what? Then they can see that you really care about what you're doing and that you're trying to make sure that there's a certain quality to it. So... Like, don't be afraid to take risks. Like, if you have an idea, let's see if it can work, you know? And the beautiful thing about marketing is that if something fails, usually that means that nobody's seen it. So the risk you had of embarrassment for trying isn't there because not many people actually saw it. Like, remember, do you remember Vine? Vine was this six-second video app that came out for Twitter for a bit. They've closed down now. But when I first started with Forrest, I had this idea that I wanted to do vines celebrating Forrest anniversaries 
with our clients. So if you joined up this time last year, this day, we were going to send you a happy birthday or an anniversary vine celebrating one year with us. So I tried that out and me and Ethan, a few people were doing it like on a near daily basis, sending people <clears throat> six second videos, just going to happy birthday on your fourth anniversary, things like this. It didn't work like at all. Like people would actually see it like three months later and be like, oh, thank you. But I actually joined in January, that kind of thing. And so it didn't work. But you know what? It didn't matter. We tried it. And then we moved on. I think that's one thing that I'd love for you guys to kind of embrace a bit more next year is if you have an idea, don't be afraid of it failing. Like look into the opportunities to help it succeed and then use that consistency and use that tone to really keep it going again and again. So don't be afraid to take risks. Like if you want to try a new platform like Snapchat or Instagram or what I think a lot of you guys would love to do if you could just get past that barrier would be video. Because across the board, across all industries, and you know yourself, video is becoming the big next step for marketing on social media. Like, as I'm speaking, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram Live. And um, I think it's going to be really important for you guys to get into this stuff. So you could be doing product reviews, testimonials. We actually have an episode of the Salon Marketing Q&A completely dedicated to video. And you can check that in the archives on our YouTube page. Um, or you can dig into the background of Facebook a little bit more. But don't be afraid to take a risk on it. Don't be afraid to be embarrassed in front of a camera. And that also goes away from social media as well if you want to take a chance on a campaign of some kind, you know? Like email or SMS. Like when I say risk, don't go way too crazy like where you're breaking your brand and you might insult people. I just mean try something you haven't tried before and you know what? It might just work or you might just enjoy it yourself. Okay. And that kind of goes into another point of mine, which is I guarantee that not everything you try next year will work. So let's not keep looking at failure as a painful experience. I mean, they say failure is learning. So just embrace the fact that not everything's going to work. If something does, fantastic. If it doesn't, it's okay. Like, it's okay to fail. That's what marketing is all about. We're trying to communicate with a large group of people about a subject or a topic that we think they'll be interested in. And usually, the way we frame it is exactly what our marketing strategy is. So we can say one thing and no one reacts, but if we say it a different way, they jump at it. That's what it is. And the best way to find that is to try it out. Try a couple of different things. So keep it consistent. Keep the tone right. Don't be afraid to take risks. And also expect that not everything is going to work. But don't be, don't be disencouraged from trying it out to begin with. Um, and also, I think that it's important that we stop looking at marketing as a chore. Whenever I speak to a lot of salon owners or I do some consultations on marketing, I get the same response. It's the kind of begrudging, oh, like I have to do marketing. Like I'm tired and I totally appreciate that you guys work around the clock. It's just that it depends on the mindset that you have when you look at marketing, that it's a chore or you get a chance to talk about something you love to the people that can be affected by it the most. And once you change the mindset that it's a negative task to an opportunity to communicate with like-minded people, it can change up a lot of things. I think that'd be very beneficial for you guys. Okay, um, I think that's going to be it for this topic. I'll just recap that quickly. There are a couple of bite-sized ideas, but they're all dedicated to making sure that your, your mindset, your frame of mind is ready for 2018. So what we're talking about is be consistent. Keep that tone consistent as well. Don't be afraid to take risks. Um, also, involve your team because I guarantee that most people are coming to your salon for them, not for you. So if you can involve them, it takes the weight off your shoulders quite a bit, and it also um, involves them more so they feel like they're a bit connected, and I think customer service will go up too. But involve your team as much as involving you. I guarantee not everything will work, but don't be afraid to try. Um, and try to shift your, your attitude to marketing. Um, if you feel like it's a chore, it's up to you to change that opinion of it, and you look at it as an opportunity. So... 
final note on this topic is I want you to do you, I want you to be real, and I want to wish you good luck in 2018. And we will be there every step of the way to help you out. Now I see that we have a question here. And before I wrap up like I normally do, I might take a peek at this question, see what it is. So Bizarre Salon wants to know what the difference between marketing is and advertising. Because a lot of people get confused with both. That's a really great question. <clears throat> I actually did a YouTube video on that like a couple of years ago. Um, let me see if I can remember what uh, my phraseology was for that. Thank you, uh, Bizarre Salon, for that question. So, marketing, marketing is more about um, what the message is, and advertising is more about the channels in which you use. So, like, if I was putting a marketing strategy together, let's say um, I'm a salon. Let's say I'm Bizarre Salon, and we've just introduced a new salon app for people to actually uh, download and use. So when I put my marketing strategy together, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to craft the tone, the message, the statement, the sentiment of what this is. And if I'm gonna do a salon app, I wanna show the benefit that the salon client or the audience is gonna get from using this app. So it'd be like, you can book 24 seven, you can book 365, you can take a look at all of our team members, you know, like there's a, many things, you can look at our menu, you can access us at the touch of a button on your phone, booking has never been easier, this kind of thing, that's the, that's the marketing of it. So advertising, that kind of feels like where's your channel going to be, so where are we going to advertise this, and advertising also has a, a connotation of it's more straight to the point, so it's like, it's more sales oriented, which can be true, like it can be true that advertising is a bit more about um, trying to portray the benefits and the uh, the item or the service in question in a more uh, flattering, sales-oriented way. Um, so I hope that answers your question a bit. Uh, I think so. Uh, I haven't answered that question or I've thought about it in like two years. Um, the video does exist on our YouTube page, though. So, um, I think that might be it for today. Unless you guys have any more questions, that might be it for the year as well, because this is the last episode that we're going to be doing for 2017. And we're going to continue into 2018 with this show, as well as introducing a new show with Valerie Del Forge. Um, and I don't even, we don't even have a title for it yet. I think we're going to be calling it the Salon Management Sessions. And we're going to trial it on uh, January 9th. It's a Tuesday. At 12:30, so that's really exciting. I can't wait to to uh, do that episode with uh, Valerie, and it's going to be similar to this in format. It's going to be split screen, so I'm going to be basically moderating, and Valerie will be answering any questions you guys might have on salon management. And she's going to be taking her years of experience managing and running salons and trying to give you guys all the benefit that she has in her experience and give it to you guys. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we might continue this on Instagram Live uh, as well as Facebook Live. I've been like looking up and down. It's like an inch for me, but I feel like I'm looking at two separate people because even in Instagram, my reflection is flipped, so I slightly look different. So it's a bit jarring, and also I have to look at two of me as I talk. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I absolutely love doing this. I hope you enjoy it too. I hope you have a great Christmas, a wonderful new year, and I will catch you next time on the Salon Marketing Q&A. Thank you guys, and until then, let's grow. Yeah.